All right. <clears throat> uh, still on uh, population proportions, confidence intervals for an unknown value, uh, an unknown uh, population proportion. And I want to work uh, the lesson five demo for video number four. So this is going to put, uh, um, you know, everything that we've done in the previous videos uh, uh, and apply it. Now, I will tell you, you may notice from video number two to video number three, I had a technical glitch. Uh, it cut off on me. So there was a little clumsiness there. So sorry about that. All right. So question number one. And taking a little different approach, I have stack crunch uh, over, you know, on the right. And so we'll go from there. All right. So express the confidence interval 0 0.043, 0 0.105 in the form of P hat minus the margin of error. Uh, what we're estimating is in the center in P hat plus the margin of error. So uh, I need two things here. I need P hat, uh, which I know I can get by uh, just finding the center of the interval. So I'm going to take uh, 0.043 and add uh, up, 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 0.105. And I'm going to divide that by 2. So my P hat is 0 0.074. And then my margin of error, of course, is just the, um, uh, I take uh, uh, 0.105 minus 0.043 divided by 2. So the margin of error is 0 0.031. So I get on the left, uh, I get 0 0.074 minus uh, the margin of error 0 0.031. And on the right, I get 0 0.074 plus uh, 0 0.031. Uh, unless we did something, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty straightforward. All right, the next question, uh, use the sample data and confidence level uh, given below to complete parts A through D. So a drug is used to help prevent uh, blood clots in certain patients in clinical trials among 4,776 patients treated with the drug. 149 developed uh, an adverse reaction of nausea. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the adverse reaction. Well, you know, you can do all this by hand. I'm not going to. I'm going to trust uh, technology. So I'll go to prop uh, one with summary, right? Because we, we have the summary. We have the 149 out of 4776. So number of successes, uh, it, it's kind of weird that successes are really not quote unquote a success. Success is what we're measuring. Uh, I don't think getting uh, an adverse reaction is technically a success, uh, but in the context, uh, it is. Uh, so 4776, uh, we want the confidence level instead of 0.95. Uh, we want uh, 0.99. And you have to be very careful with that because sometimes we get on uh, autopilot, and, uh, you know, we almost always use 0.95. So make sure you get that changed and set correctly. All right. So compute. So uh, the lower limit, what do we round to? Three places. Uh, so the best point estimate is going to be the sample proportion. So that's going to be 0 0.031. That's our P hat. Again, that's the sample proportion. That's what we get if we take 149 divided by 4776. Uh, identify the margin of error. So what I need to do here is I need to take the big value. So point, and I'm going to go out a little bit here. So I'm going to type in uh, left parentheses 0 0.037677. And I'm going to subtract uh, 0 0.02 uh, 4718. And I'm going to divide by 2. So I get uh, the margin of error to be uh, around to three decimal places. So I get 0 0.006. All Now, I construct the confidence interval uh, three places. So on my left, I get from my output 0 0.025. Uh, don't forget to round up. 
because the fourth digit is seven uh, and point zero three eight is the right band. All right, write a statement uh, that correctly interprets the confidence interval. Well, we, well, you know, we are 99% confident that this interval contains what we're looking for, uh, which is the uh, percentage of all patients who would have an adverse reaction of uh, nausea. So one has 99% confidence that the interval from the lower bound actually does contain the value of the population pr proportion. Um, yeah, you know, there's nothing else that's going to beat that one, so <laughs> let's just go for it. All right, in recent uh, tennis tournament, women playing single. Oh, this is an interesting uh, spin. This is something, uh, make sure this goes in your notes, because this is going to give a, a little interesting spin to, to stuff we've done uh, previously. So, uh, or add to stuff we've done previously with uh, confidence intervals for proportions. So in a recent tennis tournament, women playing singles matches used challenges on 136 calls made by the line judges. Among those challenges, 34 were found to be successful. Construct a confidence interval. All right, so let's do it. So number of successes were when we uh, had something overturned or when they had something overturned out of the total was 136. Uh, confidence interval they are using is a 90%. So again, don't get sloppy and get too focused on the uh, the, the 95. And uh, let's just uh, compute. So the 95% confidence interval to one place. So it wants us to do it and uh, present the answer in a percentage. So a little different here. So I have to be careful. So 18.9%. Uh, uh, to uh, thirty-one point one percent. Choose the correct answer <clears throat> below. Uh, so what we're doing up here is just compare the results from A uh, to this percentage for men. So what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to use our confidence interval for the women percentage uh, of calls to be overturned for women and for men, which is given uh, right here. It will allow me to highlight that, but it's, it's right there. Now, what we look for when we're comparing two confidence intervals to see if there's a difference is do these things overlap? Do these confidence intervals overlap? If they overlap, then we can't uh, find, statistically speaking, uh, we're going to get into words called statistically significant in the next uh, uh, section, next lesson. But we can't find statistical significance. So this interval for the women goes from 18.9 to 31.1. And for the men goes from 22.7 to 34.9. Well, you can see that this interval of uh, this upper bound of 31.1 is contained in there. So the intervals overlap. So uh, we are concluding there's no, no difference. So we're looking for the answer that uh, um, uh, represents that. So B says, since the two confidence intervals overlap, neither, a gender, neither gender appears to be substantially more successful with their challenges. So this would be the correct response. Now, if the uh, if they didn't overlap, for example, if I have an interval from zero to three and another one from six to nine, well, they clearly don't overlap, right? Then I would find uh, that there was a difference. All right, random sample: five thousand and three adults in a country includes seven fifty four who do not use the internet. That would just be awful. Uh, construct a ninety five percent confidence interval estimate of the percentage. Um, does it appear? Uh, that this is different than 47%, which was the percentage in the year 2000. Well, you would expect it would go up, uh, increase since 2000. Well, let's just go ahead and work the problem and uh, let things fall out as they may. So the people with uh, they who do not use internet, uh, 754, again, that's defined as a success. Total number of observations is 5,003. 
and uh, we want our confidence interval to be 95%, and I really don't need that stuff. Um, <clears throat> so we want, uh, again, in a percentage, so 14.1%. up to 16.1%. Uh, now, does it appear that the percentage of adults in the country who do not use the internet is different from 47%? Well, if what we're take, making a claim about or what we're testing is contained in our interval, then we can't conclude that the, the percentage is different. Uh, if the percentage that we're uh, kind of testing a claim about to see if we've changed. So this is kind of the baseline, if you will. And we've created a new interval. If this value is not in the interval, which it clearly isn't in this case, then there is a difference. So we're looking for the one where it says because 47 is not contained, so it has to be either B or C. Uh, so let's read and see which one uh, makes sense. Because 47% is not contained with the confidence interval, it appears that the percentage of adults in the country who do not use the internet uh, is uh, different. Nails it, right? <clears throat> All right, uh, New York Times uh, article reported that a survey in 2014 uh, with 37% of them being regular users of e-cigarettes, uh, relatively new, there is a uh, need to obtain today's usage rate. Uh, how many people must be surveyed? Uh, okay. So uh, assume that nothing is known about the rate of e-cigarettes. Uh, so we would use the, um, uh, the uh, uh, formula from the previous video. So if I recall correctly, uh, that was our uh, Z critical, which we're doing, constructing a 99. So that's going to be 2.576 uh, squared times 0.25. And we need to divide that by the desired margin of error, which is 0 0.025 squared. So 2655 should be the answer. And again, that's just a uh, direct application of the uh, formula that I used uh, previously. Uh, let me uh, show you again what I did there. Just pop out. So again, the 2.576 is the Z critical times the 0.25, which is the constant we use when no information is given. And then the 0.025 right here, not to be confused with that. This is the desired margin of error. If the desired margin of error had been uh, 3%, that would have been 0 0.03 completely. It has nothing to do with the 0 .02, uh, 0.25 there. All right. Uh, so uh, excellent work. Uh, use the results from the 2014 survey. Well, now is where we're going to use the uh, the p hat uh, in the q hat so i still have uh, point, uh, uh, 2.576 squared that doesn't change but now i'm going to multiply by my p hat which is uh, 0.0371 uh, times one minus 0.0371 divided by the margin of error that we want, which is 0 0.025 quantity squared. And I get 380, actually I get 379, uh, but to always round up regardless. This is one place where you don't round appropriately. Typically if we're 0.5 or less, we, do, we round down or 0.5 above, we round up. For sample size, you always uh, round up. Now, let me uh, again show you what I did. Uh, pop down here. So same thing. Um, so the 0.025 is the desired margin of error. 
Uh, I put one minus 0.037 there for my Q, uh, 0.0371 for my P hat. This is P hat, the other is Q hat. And then the 0.2576, obvious reasons. Okay, does the uh, use of the result from 2014 have much on the effect of a sample size? Well, yeah, it uh, lowered it from, uh, you know, 2655 to 380. So, uh, yes, using the result uh, dramatically reduces uh, the sample size. Okay, next question. There is no next question. Uh, that's it, right? Okay, that's all I got. Take care.